Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. Today we're doing another art journal page and we're going to do another basic art journal page. Now, this is the page I did before. And of course, this is my magazine journal page um, or my magazine junk journal, I should say. And I'm going to put the video uh, to this page up in the I card up here and down below in the description if you want to go watch it. A lot of fun, very easy and that's uh, what you guys keep requesting is more easy uh, art journal pages. So, yes, I'm going to be making a junk journal coming up. Um, there are many, many art uh, tutorials on YouTube how to do that, uh, as well as my channel. Um, and again, I'm just updating videos that I've done in the past, and that will be coming up the beginning of next week. But for now, we're going to do another one um, in our junk journal. And just to recap very quickly, this is a Faber-Castell uh, 2016-17 art and graphic uh, catalog, which is gorgeous and so many things I want in here. But instead of me just putting it to the side, looking through it and putting it to the side, I decided to turn it into a junk journal. And here we go. So a lot of you after this requested me not to use gesso. So I'm not going to use gesso on here. And I'm just going on to the next page. Now, you can always glue pages together using your glue stick or Mod Podge or whatever, white school glue, um, so they're thicker. These are very thick pages in here, so right now I'm not going to um, what, uh, gesso. So, now I can open this like this, and I can make this a two-page spread, but today I'm just going to do a one-page, but you can definitely do two-page. And I think... Today, I'm going to do, I love doing like tonal kind of things. Now, I will put also a video up in the corner in the iCard and down below of a uh, bird painting that I did. It sold, but I did a bird painting using black India ink and that is it. Um, and that was the background. And I think I used a punch of red. I can't recall, but I know it was just with India ink. And today, I'm going to use acrylic paint, but um, I'm going to use like, two colors. So I think, I think, I think I'm going to use blues. I'm thinking blues. It's winter and, um, you know, why not, why not do that? I think that in a stencil. So I want to do a light background. So first I'm going to mix up the colors. So I'm going to use some brilliant blue from folk art. I love me some folk art. And I'm just going to squeeze it here. Okay. And I'm going to use some white acrylic paint. Now, if you have like I'm doing this very basic, um, meaning I'm not using a ton of different colors. If you have a light blue that you want to use in a uh, place of mixing, by all means, go ahead. This is just for those who might not have, uh, you know, everything or too much or whatever. I like mixing. Maybe you have, I always tell you guys, if you're starting out and you don't have a lot of money, go for, make sure you look in the, um, I might want it a little lighter. Make sure you look in the sales, Joanne, DC Moore, Michael's Hobby Lobby, because they always have their, uh, acrylic paints on sale. And you can find Roy G. Biv Black White. That is my basics. I tell you guys all the time, which is red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and black and white. And with those colors, you can make so many cool colors to sit and, um, you know, work in your art journal, on a canvas, whatever you want to do. And I put a little bit more white because I really want it. I really want it light. And it's almost like a periwinkle color, isn't it? And don't forget, see on my paintbrush here, I have a lot of white. So I'm going to turn it and make sure I mix going from this side as well. I'm a mess. I get it all over the place. All right. And I think I'm okay with that. So instead of gesso, and if you want it lighter, by all means, go ahead. And don't forget, um, especially starting out, put a piece of printer paper or a piece of mixed media paper or something underneath so you don't get on to other pages. I am not right now, but by all means. And if you don't have a um, magazine or a catalog, use a piece of printer paper. It doesn't matter. Use a piece of paper that has lines on it, composition, 
um, notebook, whatever. Get it from the dollar store. It doesn't matter. Now look how pretty that covered. Now it looks a little darker uh, here than it is in life. <laughs> in real life, uh, there you go. You could kind of see, but the light's going to shine and I don't necessarily want it to shine on my paper. And I'm going to take my heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, use your hair dryer. If you don't have a hair dryer, just leave it sit and dry. This acrylic paint dries so fast. Now I'm going to dry this and we're going to see how it covered. I think it'll be fine. And this definitely helps speed it up, but you don't need it. You can see over here as I'm drawing that shiny part going away. It's not as wet. Gesso is chalkier. So if you have gesso and you want to use it by all means, but like I said, um, a lot of people just starting out don't have all the, all the good stuff. Um, and you really don't need it to create. Use what you have or, you know, now it's the holidays, Christmas holidays. Maybe somebody's asking you what you want for Christmas and you know, you could give them your Roy G. Biv Black White and get that maybe in a package of brushes and a thing of mixed media paper or something. Very inexpensive. You know, to start off the new year. Okay. I know a lot of you are begging for more uh, shout outs for people that I watch and channels that I watch. And uh, I will be doing that soon. So we have this leftover. What are we going to do? Well, what I like to do is I'm gonna pick a page and a page. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, while you're doing this, it also lets, you know, your paper that you just painted have a little more time to dry. And I'm just doing my thing here real quick. Nothing too fancy. So nothing goes to waste. I know I need it here. Now I'll have a page ready that's blue that I can use. And if you have more, do another page if you want. But I'm gonna blow this dry, but you can just leave this open and just leave it dry for a minute. It's all right. Okay, put that in there. Dry this. And honestly, if it sticks, you know, if you if you dry it and it's a little wet still uh, and it sticks a little, just add some texture. No big deal. I just like giving it a good, real quick, good uh, swipe over. I can see where it's still wet. So I just take my heat gun. And like I said, if I was just sitting down here, I'd have music on or I, I like to watch a video and then I like to let it dry. That way, if I don't want to get it real hot down here because sometimes if I have the heater on down here it could get a little warm and the heat gun just makes it worse but it depends I turned my heater off so yeah so that will be that and I'm sure I'll go open that and uh it'll be right okay so I'm just gonna wipe the majority of this off already dry and if you work on a newspaper or um, brown paper you know you can get it Walmart and copy you know staples and all that um, you can even get it at your local uh, Lowe's and Home Depot they have I think even uh, what's the other place called um, uh, what is it called I'll think of it Anyway, you can get brown paper, cheap, and you can, um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, put it all over. I've done it before. I haven't done it in a while, but you tape it all over your work area. All right. See now this, you could see a little bit where it was wet, where it's transferring over here, but I'm not, I'm just going and kind of not too many areas. So that's good. Um, 
I just don't want it to dry there. But you can definitely go and um, get that, tape it on, and then as you work, I'm sorry, I'm losing track. As you work, you can, um, you know, put off your paints and that kind of thing. And then you have mixed media background, you know, just for the extra paint that you use. And a lot of people do that. And I think that's great. Okay, so now I did this. So now I want to pick a stencil. So I will be right back. Okay, so I put the uh, crackle on the background and I blew it dry. And if I could show you, I don't know how well you'll be able to see any of the cracks yet. Um, but what I think I'm going to do is I really like this background, but I want it, I don't know, I want a little metallic on it. So, and you don't have to do this stuff, but that's just what I'm going to do. I'm going to take some of my. Ah, the blue topaz might be too blue. Hmm. What about silver? A little bit. Of, let me just try a little bit. That's what you got to do, I guess, right? You just got to try a little bit and let's see what it does. So I'll start it over here. And I will just take a paintbrush. No, it's not going to give me what I want. I don't know. I want like a... I want to shine. I can't explain what I want. <laughs> I guess if I knew exactly what I wanted. That's not what I want as my background. All right. I'll leave that on there because it won't hurt anything. That's not giving me what I'm looking for. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it here. And you could put a little piece of tape or something if you want. I'm going to take the Folk Art Texture Paint Snow White. And I'm going to take some of it in on my uh, thing. Now, you can use a credit card, whatever you have. Uh, I don't know if I have my, my... Everything's a mess down here, so... And, you know, we're just going to town. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it there. And I'm just going to run it. And run it. trying not to move my stencil too much because I don't want it to necessarily get underneath. I just want that butterfly. But if it does go underneath and believe me, sometimes it does. Um, it's okay. <laughs> we'll just deal with it. I always kind of put it off if I have extra stencil space there, just because it's easier for me to handle, but you do whatever way you do you boo. You know what I'm saying? And I think I got it all. So then I'm going to scrape this off. I'm going to do a little lift up. Yep. Perfection. Look at that. Now that ain't perfection. What the heck are you? A little bit there. That's all right. That's all right. We just wipe her off. Now I'm going to let that sit for a minute. I'm going to throw that in my water. But pay mind to the fact of I normally do not clean my stencils. Okay. But in this case, using a texture paint, modeling paste, molding paste, whatever you, whatever you call it, whatever you're using, I am only going to be able to put that much in there, but I like to clean it off. And because I'm a mess, I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to water this down. Now you can scrape all the rest of this off, put it back in your jar. You can, um, put it on your background paper. You can, you know, put a piece of paper on top and like smear it off. But I just like to do this. I don't know if I, there we go. Wow. What a concept, Cal. <laughs> Move the camera. Oh, good God. And I have my rag or paper towels, whatever you want. And I'm going to soak up, give it a wipe because I don't want it to change 
my stencil. You know what I mean? If it gets little bumpies in there. Now, some stencils I don't care, but I like this and I think I want to make something like fancy er at another time. And I don't want to. See, and I'm just wiping it. No big deal. I'm going to go the other side because it does transfer. And nothing perfect. Some people have like a, a sink or a little like um, plastic container that they have water in it. They'll dip, you know, they'll put it in just to save it. But that's about all I'm getting right there. I just want to get those out. And you see, not too bad. So I'll set you there. And then there's this, which you just give it a good push. Push them real good. See? And oh, it's done. Okay. So. Now, I'm going to dry it, and then we will see what we have. Okay, so I what I did <laughs> is I did some of the gold, except I really love it all the way around. as like a, I don't know, it just adds something else. I don't know. And then I did it over here, but then realized where I burnt it, it kind of looks a little janky. So I'll probably, uh, I don't know what I'll do there, but I'll figure it out. But I want to show you, just in case you don't, um, excuse my arm, you're not quite sure what I did. I just don't want to bore you guys as I'm sitting here painting around. All I did was took a paintbrush, I took some of the gold, and I wanted to fill in this middle. And you might have to do it a couple times because it won't cover exactly all the blue, but you get the gist. And... Then I took some more and I went just around everything like that, especially if it has white and let me just show you very quickly. And I don't worry too much if I get it on the blue and I'll show you why in a minute, which I'm sure you know why. Now, if you have a gold um, paint pen or jelly roll, or gel pen or what have you. And then I'll just do a little bit around here. You can use that instead of uh, painting if you want. That'd be fancy. I think what would be really cool is if you doodle all around this. You don't have to. But, you know, it would be cool in all the extra backgrounds. And as you can see, I just kind of, I'm going around, filling it. Now around here, I made it much more, you know, all around. I didn't do that over here. I did it much more separate, but it is totally up to you on what you want to do, what you, what you, what you want. Okay. Then let me show you. Dry that brush off. You don't want it wet at all. You want it, you know, now I'm going to take a little more of my blue. I take it out of the cap because that's how I like to do things just a little bit and then I'll go and touch up if I got gold or whatever you're using on the paint. So you can kind of not, not say that you can speed through this, but you know, if you make little things, my hands sometimes don't want to work and when they don't want to work, things happen. And as like all this, so then you just kind of go back and knock that gold back on the edges or whatever. If you want to, you might dig the gold on there and I say, hey, dig away. But you can see that it then brings it back a little bit more to the dark. Um, so I really dig that. And that I think is all I'm gonna do with the butterflies and all. So then what I was thinking, I wanna see if this crackled. So I'm gonna move it in a minute. Uh, let's move you in. And I'm gonna work on up here and I'm gonna take I think I'm going to take some pink. I know. I know. But I think I'm going to. And then what I think I'm going to do is just squirt a little bit. And this is just, uh, what is it called? Uh, Dina Wakely Media Heavy Body Acrylic Paint. I'm going to take my um, paintbrush. It's dry. And I'm just going to go like this. And I'm just going to do over in this area to see if it does dry and crackle. And go over that little bit and you can see the texture where I oh yes 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 and this is a little thicker paint and that's kind of what I wanted but look 
Can you see that? Look at that crackle. And, oh my goodness. Let me just dry it real quick just to see. And then I'm going to put, oh yeah. Everything, this is everything to me. Look at this. Oh my goodness gracious. Look how cool. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the background this pink, but I want the blue coming through. And then I'll be back to show you the final piece. Oh, Kidoki, can you see it? Oh, let me just show you. Look at that. That came out so good. Now I'm going to tell you, look at that. Oh my God, everything about this I love. I'm going to tell you, you can definitely go closer and all that kind of stuff if you want to. I'm not worrying about it. But when I went to paint on the pink, I painted it every other, you know, every which way. So that is tip number one. You can see like here, I went like this, you know, up and down with the brush here. I went sideways, um, you know, and that's kind of how I did the whole background crackle, as you saw. Um, I don't know if I put that part in, but I just painted it on everywhere and let it go. Um, I do like this texture paint um, and I do like the blue with the pink. You can definitely continue on from here. Um, you could take white paint. You can do one of my favorite things to do. And if you don't have white paint, you just use just so, oh, you know, maybe, well, I don't think I can use this. This is texture paint in white, which is what I used for here, which means I painted over it, but this is white. So it dries white. So this is great for, uh, you know, whatever you want. Um, maybe for, let me see. I don't know if this is going to work. Just some white dots that you can just kind of, I know some people, I'm not going to do a lot because some people yell at me about the whole dot situation, but, um, because they, you know, so you could see, I have that little bit. You can, if you want, you can just decorate. This is just a fantastics, but you can use a Q-tip. You don't have to use, um, you know, this, you can use the back of a, um, paintbrush too, you know, like the wooden part or plastic part. And I'm just pushing it down. You can do this on the dots themselves if you want, you know, so the little blue comes through, but it's, you know what I mean? So you're just adding just some more exciting stuff. Uh, you know, what I would really love it on is the butterfly because I have a butterfly that's always around and it's the brown and uh it has white spots so and yes you can take this and color it all different colors you don't have to color it um blue or all the same color you can color different colors browns and oranges and you know what i mean so use your imagination and just have fun do if you're nervous and you want to follow this by all means do that but then do one on your own, you know, to like, you have to, um, you know, sometimes you have to copy others and I don't care. That's why I do videos to get your own creativity out there. Do you know what I mean? And then next time you might say, Hey, I don't want this to be blue. I don't want that to be pink. And, um, you know, you do, you do your own thing. And like I said, you can do this part with the dots with a Q-tip back of a pencil an eraser back of your paintbrush, but you see how fast it's going. It is na, 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 magical. I think I got everything. I'll just do a little dot right there and then down there. Um, and the antennas I will leave uh, alone. Just dots right there. And then I like to rinse my Fantastics in water and then kind of wipe it off so the paint, the acrylic paint doesn't dry. If you're using watercolor paint, you don't need to worry about that. But I like to get that paint out so then I can use this again. And then I'll just leave it dry overnight down here and then I'm ready to go. So, I mean, you can do so many different things. If you want to write fly or a quote, add that on. It would be fantastic. But this is basically a really cool page, just like this with one stencil. And if you don't have texture paste, don't use anything. Just do paint. You don't have to do, you know, this is just a little more <coughs> products. And again, <clears throat> I can put this on here. 
you know, if you want to see again where you're at. I want, <coughs> oh my God, I need to drink water. One second. I'm going to show you one last thing I'm going to do. You don't have to do it, but I think I might, because I don't want to give up on this. I hope it doesn't pull up my, um, I don't want to give up on my out, uh, outline. As you can see, it's really pretty. It's scalloped. So how about if I take, maybe I'll just take my, uh, uniball, my white uniball. Let's see what happens. And I'm going to, as you can see, I'm not going to worry too much. Use a marker, use a Sharpie. Maybe there's a certain color Sharpie and I'm going to leave the, the tape on there. It's a little, a little, um, textured with the, but I'll take the tape off after I get all this done. I don't know if it's continuing to draw or not. Come on, baby. Let's see up here. Might be that the crackle is a little still damp. Plus it's very chilly down here in my room. Let's see here. There we go. I am loving these pens these pens really it's not going right there though Cal okay so now I'll take this off and then finish here and then I'll take this off finish here and then this one and it's not gonna do any it must be something down here that's not letting it write but I'm okay and because you know the majority of it wrote Let's take it off. Look at that. Very cute. Not hating on it. Not hating on it at all. And you can really, you know, go from here and, you know, really uh, doodle and, and do all kinds of stuff. You want to make this a different color? Now you can trace it. Use pen, use uh, paint or whatever you want. So, yeah. So, that's just it for today. Um, I really dug doing this. It was a lot of fun. And you can also save these little pieces. Uh, and paint on them and then add these into your art journal page as well. But I love doing this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. I would love to know if you enjoy uh, and are enjoying these art journal, you know, for beginners, a little intermediate on this one. Um, I'd really love to know. And as always, please be kind to each other because you never know what battle somebody else is fighting. I love you guys so very much. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.